Take us back to the beginning. How did you discover your passion for acting and storytelling? Yeah, good question. Um, I think as a kid, I like to play pretend. And I, I grew up in downtown Calgary, but we were very lucky to have quite the big backyard. And uh, I would kind of make or create these worlds and inhabit these characters in my backyard um, and use a hockey stick as a, as a prop, whether it was a sword or a gun or something, you know, if I was going to war, winning game seven of the uh, NHL playoffs, I think it was that setting that kind of allowed me to escape. Um, and then I realized that uh, there's people out there that are just as weird as I am. So <laughs> um, I took that to the theater and I grew up doing that uh, in my high school and kind of local areas around Calgary and kind of just took off from there. Transition been like for you going from the stage to now the screen, how do kind of those mediums differ? Yeah, this, I mean, similar in a lot of ways. Uh, the the screen is is much smaller. It 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 really it really will catch you, whereas the theater is uh, is grand. And and I think filmmaking is, you know, when it, it's all about connecting to people, right? And a movie or a TV show is a maybe a little connection to the entire world if they choose mm -hmm. to watch it. And then the theater and on being on stage is a much smaller connection, but it's much more intimate, right? That's like a one-time thing. Those people are going to see that version of the show and only those people. So it kind of is this smaller shared experience. So I think um, just that, yeah, the, the, the levels in which that, you know, it's, it's a, you're sharing it to the whole world and it's a, it's definitely scary, but you have many opportunities to do it. And um, it's, more prepared but I, yeah it's it's uh there's a difference but yeah. at the end of the day it's just acting connecting with the scene partner that's all it is great answer you've been really open about the ups and downs of being a young actor in this industry during those more challenging times how have you been able to, to persevere yeah that's the trickiest thing i think uh when you do get a job they they're actually they're not paying you to act they're paying you for the you know however many months or years of anxiety and uh <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I mean, Jason, my favorite Jason Bateman soundbite was never quit your day job. Mm. So I think uh, keeping a, a level of consistency in your life, um, I would say, you know, really discover your hobbies and, and you know, don't, don't spend any time waiting around, um, you know, fill your days with things that you wouldn't get to do if you were on set. So yeah, discover your other passions and hobbies and uh, go to work and uh, go outside, stay busy. And so when you look at your career as a whole, who or what has had the biggest influence either personally or professionally? Oh boy, so many people. I think um, I've, I moved to Vancouver kind of blind and alone. I would say uh, mentor wise, I have uh, two great coaches, Bob Frazier um, and Deb Podowski. They're kind of Vancouver local people that have uh, set me straight uh, and really have taught me almost everything I know. Um, so I'm endlessly appreciative for them. And my agent, Melise, who kind of took a absolute stab in the dark um, and gave me a chance when uh, she she hadn't seen any any of my work. So I'm very appreciative. And uh, and just like the, the community, the young actor community here, it's just like everyone roots for each other and we uh we see each other's successes and it's less of a competitive nature but more of a you know cheering each other on it's like one big movement of uh, wanting everyone to succeed so just yeah everyone everyone else man speaking of that success you've got a heavily recurring role in firefly lane what should audiences know about your character what was it about him that resonated with you mm. well i think uh coop is his name a, a kid from the 70s um coop is you know, he's the the sporty jock guy, most popular dude in the school. And I think uh, he explores a more sensitive side of himself that he didn't realize he had with uh, maybe a little Shakespearean play and a relationship with one of the other characters in the show. Uh, I think I relate to Coop because there's a lot of conflicting interests with mm. himself and uh, he doesn't really... He doesn't know how to be honest about his feelings because he doesn't know how to identify them. And I feel like any, you know, tumultuous teenager uh, yeah. who's having trouble finding their way uh, would feel that they can relate. 
when you're preparing for a, ro- a new role, you like to know the material inside and out, not only from your character's perspective, but all of the, those around him. How have you been able to find the balance between being prepared, but also flexible enough to find kind of those more organic choices on the day? Great question, Kevin. It, and it's something I I have yet to figure out because you want to stay loose, I, I, I believe. Anyways, I think the greatest performances are just from, you know, it's an instinctual talent acting. So if you can just just be like that, that is really the secret. And there's so many great performances that are just examples of just people being and getting like raw emotions and reactions from each other. But then you owe it to the the set and the story and yourself and the character to know it. So I think my, my approach to it is that if I know it inside out, not until I can get it right, but really till I can't get it wrong. Like every word, mm. every comma, and I understand the objectives and I, you know, really understand the work. Uh, and then I can go in there and I'm never thinking about the lines or like, what's the, what's the next, what is she going to say next? Or what? I don't have to worry about what's going to come next. Therefore, if, if that's just a problem that I've like removed from the equation, then I can, then maybe that is one of the keys to freedom, but sometimes it isn't. Um, yeah, that is, that is, that's really the secret to, to the success of this. Yeah, like you were saying earlier, your character goes on quite the journey throughout this the, the season. As an actor, how did you create this space for yourself to tackle kind of those more vulnerable moments? I, you know what? I think it was kind of, uh, <laughs> there wasn't a lot of space created. It was kind of, uh, I got thrown into the deep end of the pool with no floaties, to be honest. <laughs> First day, I had, I had two scenes I was pretty nervous for. Uh, within my like first week of shooting and then I get there and I'm like you know I have no idea what a call sheet really looks like I'm trying to figure out what's going on and I see the first scene is the one I'm most nervous about and then the second one right after that is the one I'm second most nervous about so I kind of just I had no time to be to freak out about it Mm -hmm. Um, and they just kind of were like we're doing we're doing those scenes and you know you you really have you have to step up to the plate um I think I might have. I hope I did anyways. Uh, but yeah, there wasn't uh yeah, to be vulnerable. I mean, I had Roan Curtis is just the most lovely, talented human being. And really, you know, she she really coddled me through that scary experience. Um, so yeah, just good people around me and kind of no time to think about it. Just, um, you know, lights, camera, action, you know. You've also said in previous interviews that this project was such a huge learning experience for you. Did anything surprise you about the overall film experience? What's the biggest lesson that you learned that you've not been able to bring to future projects? Yeah, um, another wonderful question. I think the biggest thing for me was how, it's crazy how different all the jobs on a film set are. Mm. You know, yeah. From the actors, producers, directors, to the electricians, to the gaffers, like those, you know, all these people are working so hard and they're very good at what they do. It's weird being in a room of so many different professions, but everyone's so good at what they do, but it's all an effort to make this one thing. So it's like, it's, it was just strange. Like you, you're in a room of 80 people and they're all doing these different jobs and they just come together to materialize one product. So I think seeing that, you know, there's these many teams all around the set and seeing them kind of work together within each other, but also with everyone else in the other departments was like, cool. It really like, it's very military style, which I didn't realize, mm. or like a kitchen. There's a lot yeah. of yelling, nothing's personal, <laughs> stuff gets done, you know, it's cool. Yeah. With this being one of your biggest roles to date, is there a particular scene that you're really excited for our audience to see when part two comes out? Oh boy. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I think uh, one, I think people get the kick out of the most, um, speaking in terms of what my family and grandmother thought. Uh, I had to sing uh, Barry Manilow's Mandy on stage um, that I think people will get a kick out of, for better or for worse. But. <laughs> you know, this is such an exciting time in your career. As you look ahead to the next kind of five to 10 years, is there a dream role that you would love to bring to life either on the stage or the screen? Oh, man. I mean, anything. Uh... Yeah, so many. I mean, nothing, no specific past performances, but just something that will uh, take me out of my comfort zone, you know, mm-hmm. uh, physically, mentally, and something that means something, something that tells a story. And uh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's not a good answer. Maybe I'll be more specific. I think like a, like a night crawler, Jake Gyllenhaal night crawler, you know, something that's very visceral and, and kind of, uh, 
meaty and heavy and, and requires like a real change to your, your personal being. I think a, a lot of the times you start playing yourself and then once you've kind of earned the right to play somebody else properly, that's when like the real creative fulfillment comes in and you kind of just, you get to explore all these different kinds of people within your work. Oh, 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 o